Hi all, I have a very entertaining Nakamura game to show you from the Tradewise Gibraltar tournament earlier this year, 2018. So his opponent was Nils Grandelius. E4 from Nakamura, we have C5, Knight F3, D6. So Grandelius has to be given credit for playing the sharp Sicilian defense. Uh, Nakamura is renowned to have amazing tactical ability in these types of positions. This is a very theoretical line here. This has all been seen before. F3, B5, Queen D2, B4, Knight A4, Knight BD7, White Castle's Queen side. So the scene is set for a tactical slug fest. Queen A5, B3. Now this pawn is pinned and White is usually punting for A3 here, believe it or not. It seems a bit counterintuitive perhaps. You might think if, if White's castled over here, does he want to move these pawns? But this is very theoretical. A3, the Queen drops back. White takes that pawn. D5. Now here, uh, there's a, a few games with B5. For example, E5. B6, knight takes, knight e6. This has been seen before, and it's thought to be a, an even position, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, so that's a sharp continuation. In this game, we see bishop f2, a bit rarer perhaps. Um, bishop d6, e takes d5. Now, at this juncture, it seems as though black might do best to try and exploit the pin here with bishop f4 to drag this bishop back. For example, bishop e3 and now take on e3 and then take on d5. And this position uh, should be okay. Even if c4, black has a lot of resources here. For example, like this, hitting the queen. And it's just mega, mega sharp position. This is just an engine view of the position. And it's thought to be uh, uh, about equal. Uh, that's just, it's crazy stuff. But it seems technically bishop f4 might be the way to go. In this game, knight takes d5. And now there's a very, very powerful pinning move. I know pins have been a big theme recently. Can you uh, see the move that Nakamura played? I've given you a big clue. Uh, so I'll give you five seconds. OK, it seems that this is a very, very good idea. Bishop g3, it takes the sting out of blacks. Uh, potential to win back this pawn and op opening up the rook uh, gives white something when black takes on g3 so that's why perhaps bishop f4 was more accurate than this continuation if we look in the game well rook c8 was played but if we look at bishop takes g3 for a moment and black taking here white can get on with c4 kick the queen out and white stands very nicely there these pawns are actually quite a menace on the queen's side. So we see actually rook c8. Uh, but now c4 anyway. Bishop takes b4. So the rook is protecting the queen. This is hitting the queen. But now queen g5. So there's the queen and g7 attacked. And this is where it gets quite fascinating. Because is this a greedy pawn to take? Isn't white having some difficulties here? But Nakamura does take that. It's not just weakening these squares. The queen can actually have this diagonal, believe it or not. So after rook f8, uh, we have here knight c2, bishop c6, and it looks really dangerous now. Where does this knight go back? But there's a key move, which is a bit of a stunner, which keeps the advantage for white technically. A fantastically uh, resourceful move, which I have given a bit of a clue about earlier. So white to play, what would you play in this position? Okay, the queen just jumps back to a1. I just think it's a wonderful use of squares. Coming back, if you look at the queen's route, it's been quite entertaining. So queen a1, knight c5, but this knight is holding the queen. So knight takes c5 is possible. The queen's come off. But uh, here, black throws in this check. And uh, it is 
looking tricky but we see King d2 this might actually be the most accurate move check King d3 Knight c3 if uh, Bishop takes c5 instead this position is uh, well it's a piece up for white white has got the extra knight here so that's not too bad so we see Knight c3 hitting the rook Knight takes a6 yeah now uh, hitting the bishop which is protecting the knight and this is quite amusing in itself actually the, the pieces which are, are protecting other pieces are kind of probed by both sides here so we see check now if knight takes d1 white does end up better after taking on b4 for example check here knight c3 check king f2 this position bishop d3 held by the knight is good for white uh, so we see now okay check king c2 and rook takes d1 but now look at this knight takes b4 so taking away the defender of the knight which is defending the rook and some smoke has been cleared here and we see that white if he can unpin here has two pieces for a rook a material advantage as well as being two pawns up king d7 knight c2 hitting the rook rook b1 and now a necessary move to try and untangle so basically facilitating unpinning so with unpinning we are releasing a load of resources can you see a key unpinning move in this position if you did want to move this bishop one day what is a necessary important move that was played here if I give you five seconds starting from now okay knight e1 yeah held by the bishop so this bishop can move next rook a8 bishop d3 hitting the rook king d2 now and now again the a1 square is subject to attention can you see what white plays okay bishop e5 again hitting that key a1 square check king e2 and the rooks are struggling to hold each other of the bishop b2 white is winning material and uh, even more material now we have even more material advantage and he's solved all the problems here so black resigned I just thought this was a, a crazy game really uh, it's interesting the kind of innovation Bishop f2 uh, with the idea of Bishop g3 getting a pin there and the idea of Queen g5 taking here the swinging the Queen back I just thought some very interesting entertaining moves in general in this game hope you enjoyed it so one of the sharper games from Nakamura in the Tradewise Gibraltar earlier this year okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much